Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. As you can tell, I'm doing a little bit of pre-filming. So today's video is going to be some series I would like to start this year. Now, this is not an all-encompassing list. I'm not saying these are the only series I'm gonna start this year. I'm not saying there's not other series I'm gonna start this year because I know I will. And this isn't even all the series that I'm trying to finish this year. These are just ones that I want to start because they've been on my mind for a while or I just want to. These are going to be ones that for the most part, the first couple at least have been released, if not the whole series has been released. I think there's only one on this list where only the first one's out right now, but the second one's coming out later this year. But for the most part, most of these have been released. Some of these have been released fully. Some of these have like the first few. So for the most part, there's at least several that have been released in the series. And some of these are older that I've wanted to get to. Some of these are hyped that I just haven't gotten to yet, or just ones I wanted to start but haven't made myself start yet. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of the, of the series that I'm thinking about starting that I want to start. And hopefully by making this video, it will push me to actually start them. And maybe you guys can also remind me that, hey, you needed to read this book or push me to read the book if you've read it and you really liked it. So with all that being said, let's just get into it and look at the series that I want to start this year. The first one that I want to start that I should be starting this month because it's on my TBR is The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. As I probably said in my TBR video, I've heard really good things about this YA series and it's following a princess that runs away from an arranged marriage and she ends up meeting these two male characters. One of them is an assassin sent to kill her and one of them is the prince she was betrothed to but she ran away from and she doesn't know their identities and you as the reader going through this does not know which is the assassin and which is the prince which i think is really fun and really cool and that's really what drew me to this story so i would really like to start this series especially because i'm also really intrigued to read dance of thieves and i know that it's set in this universe even if it's not the same characters so i kind of want to get through this one before i would start those so i really want to start book one i might actually try to start this very very soon like today <laughs> if i can but yeah, this is definitely one I've been meaning to get to and I would really love to. I do have all three books of this series, so I'm primed and ready to start it. And please tell me for all of these if you've read these series and what you think of them because I would love to know and maybe it'll encourage me to pick them up faster. The next series I would love to start this year is the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend. This is a middle grade series that I have heard is comparable to like Harry Potter where she is whisked off to a magical school. I have again heard nothing but good things about this series and I believe the fourth one is coming out this year. I've heard this is just fun and magical and a good time. I believe the kind of premise of this series is that you're following Morgan Crow and she is born with like some sort of curse and she's destined to die on her 11th birthday and before her birthday comes she is whisked away to this magical school. But in order to kind of get into this school and receive this second chance at life, she has to first go through and pass the set of impossible trials. And the story kind of goes from there. It sounds really fun and like a really good time. And so I would love to be able to start this because I've really been wanting to for a while and just never have. And I really need to. The series I would really like to start is the Iron Fae series by Julie Kagawa. And the first one is the Iron King. And I was trying to think about this and I haven't read any of Julie Kagawa's works, even though many of them intrigue me, particularly Shadow of the Fox. But I saw this series when it was like getting the rebranding with all of the covers when she was releasing another series in this same world. And I was really intrigued by that one. And I was like, oh, I can't read that one without reading these. And I hadn't really heard much about these, even though it's a pretty popular older YA series because I think this series was published in 2010 and then it was rebranded in 2020 with these covers and I believe they also did some revisions of the text and so I know it was a popular YA fantasy back in the day but I had never read it and so I'm kind of curious to see how this will play out as like a revision but I really want to know what it's about. I don't know if there's necessarily a lot of hype behind this series. I think there isn't to some degree but I think it's kind of one of those things where some people really loved it, some people liked it, some people hated it. You know, it just depended on you as a person and you as a reader on how you took it. I think it'll be interesting for me to start it like this with the revised texts because then maybe some of the stuff I wouldn't have liked before I may like now. So this is following Megan Chase and before she turns 16, she kind of has this feeling that her life has always felt off or like wrong in some way ever since her father disappeared when she was six. 
So as she's turning 16, her little brother goes missing. And then she learns that she is the daughter of a fairy king. And it's a secret and she could be a pawn in this deadly war. And she's kind of put in this situation to figure out how far she will go to save someone she loves, to stop a mysterious evil that not even the fae are brave enough to fight. And she may or may not win the love of a prince that would rather her potentially die rather than see him get soft. So it sounds kind of cruel prince-esque, but a little bit different. So hopefully it's different. <laughs> I wasn't really a big fan of The Cruel Prince, but I am curious about it. I feel like I never really was interested in reading fae stories when I was younger and growing up, so now I'm kind of more okay with reading some fae stories, so I would like to know what this is about. So it is a series I would like to start this year. These are like special editions. I don't really... Is it just the... I don't really know why, if it's just the color change. I know they all kind of have some like exclusive content in them, but I don't know. I'm curious. Another series I would like to start this year is the Something Dark and Holy Trilogy by Emily A. Duncan. This is a series that I have been wanting to start for forever. I think I've put The Wicked Saints on my TBR a couple of times and never got around to it, but it is a trilogy I want to read. And I know there's some controversy about this series and there's a lot of mixed feelings about this series. I just kind of want to read it for myself and figure out if I like it or not, because from what I understand, people have pitched this as if you shipped Elena and the Darkling together in in the Grisha trilogy, then you will like this series and that's kind of what it reminds people of. And I did. I love the Darkling and just loving the Darkling and knowing that's what people say about this series, I'm really intrigued and I want to know. So I would love to be able to read this and kind of figure out my own thoughts on it and see if I like it or not. I love these Alcrate editions. They're stunning. But I want to know what it's about. I would just I just want to know, you know? I want to know the hype. I want to know why people hate it. Like I just want to know. I want to know and I'm allowed to know <laughs> and I feel like I don't really know a lot about this book so I'll just kind of read you a little bit of what is in the inside flap it says a girl named Nadia who hears the whispers of the gods inside her head a prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins a monster hidden behind pale tortured eyes and a smile that cuts like a knife the paths of these three characters become intertwined during a centuries-long war filled with sinners, saints, magic, and mystery and a star-crossed romance that threatens to tip the scales between dark and light forever. And honestly, I don't really know much about that story other than that. I know there's blood magic used in this, which can be used in a lot of fantasy or witchy type books. So we'll see. I'm just curious. Another series I would like to start this year, even though it intimidates me a little, is the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. House of Earth and Blood is the first installment in this series, and then the second one is House of Sky and Breath. They're both out at this point. I did enjoy the Akatar series more than I thought I would because of the fantasy elements, and so I'm curious to see her adult works in this like city of all of these mythical creatures and magical creatures. That just sounds really cool. And it has a detective that is a fallen angel. And that was, I think I've mentioned this on my channel before, but that was kind of what sold me on reading this was because that just sounds so cool. And I honestly don't know a lot about it. I just know that the city is kind of made up of all of these magical creatures and can be dangerous. And that you're following the main character, Bryce, who I believe her friend is like brutally murdered and she finds her and she wants retribution. And so she teams up with this fallen angel detective to try to figure out what happened to her friend and get revenge, I believe. And they kind of like get into like the scummy parts of the city to try to uncover what happened. And I really don't know much about it other than that. And like I said, Fallen Angel Detective was all I needed. So I do want to start this series and I do have book two so I could go through it pretty quickly potentially. They're kind of chonkers, so I don't know. But I am really curious about this series and it being Sarah J. Mass's first adult novel, even though these were rebranded into adult, which they should have been in the first place. But I'm just curious to see what this is all about. I have heard other booktubers that do enjoy fantasy, like I do, liking this book quite a bit. And I think they liked it more than her other series. So I'm kind of excited about this and I think it'll be fun. Another series that I really want to start is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. I have never read a Victoria Aveyard book and the second one, Blade Breaker, I believe, is coming out this summer. And so I really, this was one I was really looking forward to last year and I just never picked it up. And so I really want to read it this year and then I can maybe pick up the second when it comes out. I, again, don't know much about this, but I did hear that it was pitched as a villain romance, which we all know I'm here for the villains. Let's be honest. So the fact that it's a villain romance is 90% of why I bought this. But it's also a fantasy novel. I love fantasy. And on the back here, it kind of has this little blurbs and it says, a squire, the survivor of a failed quest, 
an immortal, timeless and unfathomable, an assassin, skilled and heartless, an old sorceress holding secrets behind her teeth, and a pirate's daughter, the war's last hope. The heroes are gone, but the fight to save the world has only just begun. So that just sounds so fun and villainous and hopefully morally gray, which is my vibe. And you know, all I really know is that she, is that this ragtag team is sent to kind of save the world, but they may be doing it with more, in a more darker way than like a hero type character would, maybe willing to do things that a typical hero would not do. I don't know where the villain romance aspect comes into this. I don't know a lot about the plot. I believe they are, you know, they're trying to save the world against some dark force, but I don't really know all of the minutia and intricacies of that. But everything I've heard about this book just sounds so good. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this book actually. And that's not because they're not talking about it. I think I'm just not in the circles where people have read it and talked about it. I think I just haven't found the videos or intentionally searched for videos that have talked about this. But I really wanna know what I think about it. And I'm pretty excited about this series overall for a person that's never read it or read any of Victoria Aveyard's works. But Villain Romance sold me and here we are. So I would love to get to this. Another series I would like to start this year just because I simply would like to know the hype. And that is the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I know I have the Fancy Fairy Loot editions and I've never read them, stop judging me. Just kidding, you can do whatever you want. But I thought like if I'm gonna love this series then I'm gonna wish that I had these editions. And if I don't love this series, I can maybe sell them to somebody who would. But yeah, I've heard I've heard people talk about this series, even though I really don't know what the plot is about. <laughs> I've heard people really love this series. I've heard other people read this series because it's hyped and think it's okay, but not anything great. I have heard that if you're looking for a really big in-depth high fantasy plot, that's not what you're gonna get in this series. It's more of a fantasy romance. I'm still curious because of so much hype about it. I did read um, I have read, I have read one of Jennifer L. Armentrout's works before, and that was the Lux series, which was fun, but not like great. You know what I mean? You know how you can have like a book that you read and you read it really quickly and it's fun. But if people were to say like, is that your favorite book? You're like, no, <laughs> that's kind of how I felt about it. It was kind of like junk food, if you will. It was fun. It was quick. It was satisfying. But then later on, you're just kind of like, is that it? <laughs> So I'm assuming that it's going to be better than that because that was one of her earlier works. But I also don't know if it's going to be completely up my alley because I tend to be a plot person. Maybe if it's written well, I, I don't care so much about the plot as the characters, but I don't know. To me, I feel like I need a plot. So I'm curious how I'm going to feel about this. You've heard of this book. Everyone's heard of this book. And there's so much hype surrounding it that I just really want to know for myself. And I think even if it's not the best thing I've ever read that I'm going to enjoy it, hopefully I do. <laughs> you know that there's like, I do know that there's like magical creatures in this, right? I don't even know necessarily who, but I know there's like vampires and werewolves in this, which I like that. I like creatures and I like mythical creatures and fantastical beings and stuff like that. So that will intrigue me. Basically from what I know about this is she is the maiden and you don't really know what that means, but she is like meant to be pure and not really seen or experience pleasure. And then this like daring captain of the guard type character, I really don't know if that's even what he is. It's like her guard is kind of like tempting her or enticing her and I guess trying to get her to be with him romantically and showing her that like having pleasure or fun is not necessarily a bad thing and may not even matter in the world, but I don't know how any of that plays into the story or if it's even true and he's like lying to her. I have no idea, but that's all I know about this book. I've probably seen some spoilery things about like their romance or something, but that's it. And yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what, what this book is about really. And I, does anyone know? Is that the point? There's no plot that you don't really know what it's about. Now I'm curious. Anyway, I want to know for myself. I want to figure it out. And so I'm going to read this. <laughs> or at least I hope to read this this year. Or start it. My goodness, there's a lot of books. Even if I don't finish it. There's those three books. There's another one which is in like another series. And then the next one in this series is coming out this year. I don't know. It's kind of confusing to me. But 
I know there's gonna be more books. Another one I really want to start that I've never read is the Ark of the Scythe trilogy by Neil Schusterman. I've never read anything from this author and this trilogy really stood out to me and it sounds like something I would really love and just one that I've been putting off and just never picked up. But I really think this is something that if people were recommending me books based on what I've liked in the past, they would be like, read the Ark of the Scythe trilogy. So I really need to read this. It sounds amazing. From what I understand, the premise of this book is that you're in this dystopian society. You've conquered so much in medicine and in the world that people no longer die um, of natural causes. And so the world is over obviously overpopulated if people are never dying. So their kind of solution to this is to have scythes and they are people that are trained to kill to keep the population down. I don't know everything that goes into that yet with this story, but I know that you can only you can only kill like certain people you can't just like off whoever you want like there's a certain art to it and if they get it wrong there's really bad consequences i don't know how the decision is made where people are getting killed but i know it's probably like some corrupt government thing <laughs> so i'm sure that has a lot to do with the plot but i just don't know because i haven't read it so i'm really curious about this and i think it's going to be one i would really love just sounds like the characters are going to have to face and make a lot of tough choices and maybe there's some morally gray areas in this and so it sounds like something i really love and i really need to start it so i should probably start it this year if i can another reason i'm wanting to read a lot of the books that i have on my shelves because i have a lot of these at least the first books is that i want to i want to have more that i'm reading that i own i'm obviously still going to be buying books and reviewing books for you guys and picking up books that I'm interested in. But I want to read a lot more of my backlist and a lot more books I own. That way, if I love them, I can talk about them. And if I hate them, I can maybe unhaul them in the future. Um, but at least I would be able to get my thoughts up on them and kind of weed out some stuff and make room for other books potentially. So that's kind of why this has been coming to my mind and how I've been wanting to get through my backlist and not just have them sitting here for forever. So that's one of the reasons behind this video as a random side note. Okay, the next one, I'm not going to pick up the books <laughs> because holding it would make me tired. And also it's kind of a weird situation. So I've never read anything from Brandon Sanderson, but there's so many writings of Brandon Sanderson that are interesting to me, but I just haven't picked any of them up. Kind of what I would like to do this year is start one of these series. I don't know which one yet. I would either like to start the Stormlight Archive series, which is over here. I could put up a picture if you really want one, but they're right here. I either want to start the Stormlight Archive series or the Mistborn trilogy, which I believe we do not own any Mistborn books any longer. We had some of them in mass market paperback and, and I yeeted them because I do not like mass market paperbacks and so I would either listen to them or buy um, some normal copies of them. But um, those are the two kind of Brandon Sanderson series that I would like to start one of them this year. I could potentially start both, but really my goal is to just start at least one of those series this year because I am really curious about both of them and about Brandon Sanders' writing. I think I will enjoy both of them, but the Stormlight Archive is so intimidating. From what I know about the Mistborn series, you're following a main character who is a Mistborn, which means that they can um, basically control or yield all of the different types of magic. And the way magic works in this system is that they ingest metals, different types of metal, and then they can burn the metal and then use that to do crazy stuff, like really cool powers, like become super strong, indestructible, what have you. Only a few are Mistborn, which means they can utilize all of the metals and do all of the things. And she is, and then she's also teaming up with another Mistborn that is older. And kind of where the story is picking up is like, there was a big battle that you like see in all these fantasy novels, but the evil bad guy won. And so you're kind of looking at the aftermath of that and then trying to, I believe, take down this like empire, this evil empire. That's all I know about the series but it sounds really cool and really interesting and really different. I'm sure that's why it's done so well. My husband's read that series. He's read like all of Brandon Sanderson's works and I would like to read that one too. In the Stormlight Archive, I feel like I have no idea what the premise for the Stormlight Archive is, except that you, you're following a main character, I believe his name is Kaladin, that is like everyone's favorite and he's very noble and amazing and everybody has different abilities and there's shard blades that are rare. <laughs> I don't know much about this story at all honestly but that it's a high fantasy and you're trying to you know fight an evil power like most high fantasies are. I don't know everything it entails and I do want to pick it up because I would like to know. I don't know if I'm going to pick up the Stormlight Archive this year or Mistborn this year or both but those are two that are on my radar that I would like to pick up and hopefully I can pick one of them up this year. 
Another one that's been on my radar pretty much since it came out, but I've never picked it up, is the Poppy War Trilogy by R.F. Kuang. I think, again, this is a series that I will love, and I will love seeing all of the morally gray or just terrible choices that the characters have to make in war and seeing like all of the villainous dark aspects of war in this I think I will really enjoy even though it's going to be sad and dark I think I think it's going to be something that I'm really going to vibe with and I'm really going to like even though it's horrible <laughs> that sounds so weird and awful um, but I think I'm really going to love this book and this series my husband's also read this and he's really enjoyed it and he thinks that I will also like it and it's just one of those ones where I have been like yeah I want to read it yeah I want to read it but I never do and I never pick it up so it is one that I need to make time for this year to at least start and see where I get. And I don't know a ton about the plot. I know like the premise of the first book and the beginning is like, is that the main character Ren is kind of this like peasant girl type character and she is, she goes to take this test and she passes the test like perfectly with flying colors and everyone's shocked that she could pass this test and do so well in this test and either no one's passed it this well before or no one in her standing has ever passed this well before and so they're kind of thrown off by that and she goes to this like military academy to train for war and she discovers she has this really big power i don't know much about that but i know this book and character kind of toes the line where they're a hero-esque type character but they're not necessarily good and it i guess morally gray would be a good would be a good description but i also feel like it's not the best description from what i've heard of this character it's kind of more like you when you're in war things are not black and white and things get really sticky really quickly when you're trying to win a war and so i'm sure you're following like the dark deeds that this person that this character has to make as they're going into that and i don't know i don't think the war is in this book i may be wrong but i think this is just in the military academy i think it's going to be one that i'm really going to enjoy even though, and it's going to be really dark and i need to start it and i haven't yet so hold me to it Another one that I would really like to start and I think I'm really going to enjoy is the first Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. The first one is The Blade Itself. And this is just a very classic high fantasy. I think people really love this series and there's so much hype around it and I think there's a good reason there's hype around it. I believe it's a grim dark fantasy which sounds great. And I know very little about this plot except that this has the character Glockta who is a torturer and he just sounds like a character I will love. So I'm sorry I'm not really giving you a great synopsis of this, but I just know it's kind of one of those things that like I knew the synopsis a while ago and now it slips my mind and I can't really think of it. And this one is like the collector's edition, so it doesn't have a synopsis because it assumes you know, <laughs> um, which is a good assumption. <laughs> yeah, sorry I can't give you a lot more on that, but it is a pretty hyped series that I've really wanted to read. I've heard really good things about this and Galacta in particular, and so I would like to know for myself and want to dive into a lot more adult fantasy so this is a great way to start i think so definitely want to read that this year another one that is an older ya series it's been on my radar for a little while and sounded really interesting to me at the time and just haven't had the chance to pick it up yet is girl of fire and thorns by ray carson this is a four book series so far i think it's ending at the fourth book but so far there's four books in the series and it's just the girl of fire and thorns series this series sounds really interesting. It also got like a rebranding with the covers, which I love. This also came out in like 2011, like a long time ago as a fur fantasy series, but I've heard pretty good things about it. I haven't heard a ton of people talk about it, probably because it came out a while ago, but I have heard some good things about it and I would like to know my own thoughts and opinions about this series. So basically all I know is that this follows a fearful 16 year old princess who discovers her like true heroic destiny after being married off to a king of a neighboring country which is in turmoil and she's also being pursued by like these enemies that have a bunch of like dark magic. That's kind of all I know about this book and that sounds great. <laughs> dark magic is great. I don't know how I'll feel about the marriage, the being married off part, we'll see when I get there. But it sounds really good and I think she has some secret powers which is her like heroic destiny type thing and only like she can save the kingdom. So it sounds really interesting even though it's kind of like a very vague summary. I would love to know your opinions on this series if you've read it or just if you think I should read it because it does sound very interesting but and like I said there's four books in the series and the fourth one didn't come out until like 2020 which I thought was really interesting so I don't know if there was like it was like wrapped up and then they decided to do another novel to tell like a backstory or if it was kind of open-ended and so the author just took an opportunity. I have no idea, but it's one that I would like to get to and start this year. Another YA fantasy series I would like to start this year is the Frostblood Trilogy by Ellie Blake. 
I just like the I like the cover a lot and I like the quote on the cover that says the reign of ice must end <laughs> oh my gosh look at the art in this it looks like ice that is so cool I don't know a lot about this series I remember picking this up a year or so ago and thinking the premise sounded really interesting at the time and then I got this one really cheap for like five bucks at like a used bookstore or like an outlet store and then I found the second one on sale at like a books a million and I think I found the third one secondhand somewhere else that I might get as well but I haven't picked that one up yet and it's just kind of a series that I'm really intrigued by and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about and basically you're following Ruby who is a fireblood and she's in a world that is ruled by the frost blood and they're really cruel and horrible people and through the death of her mother she kind of becomes involved in this like rebel plot to take down the uh, reigning frost blood class and I think there's like some enemies to lovers romance type situation and she's like captured and forced into these like trials against the frostblood champions and so all of that just sounds really great and really fun hopefully it's executed well but yeah i'm just really curious about this series and i like the like fire frost fire and ice aspects i've always been kind of intrigued by that idea and in the magic system so i'm really curious about this and i think i'll really enjoy it but we will see because i would like to start it this year Another trilogy I would like to start this year because I read the first trilogy and now there's a second trilogy that's going to be out in the in the same world is the second Red Rising trilogy. I don't know if it has another name other than that because it's, I, it's in the same world, it's in the same setting. I think it follows the same characters, but it's not a part of the original trilogy. And the first one of that is Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. And I don't even know necessarily the premise of this, but I just know it's following Darrow and like that whole cast of characters after the events of the Red Rising trilogy, after the power shift happens. I don't know a lot about the plot other than that. And honestly, I feel like I don't really need to because I know what happened in the Red Rising trilogy and I just kind of want to go into it blind, seeing what happens after that. And at first I thought there was only two books in this series, but I recently was looking it up on Goodreads. I saw that there's a third book projected to come out at the end of this year. And so I was like, well, that's perfect. So I can start the first one, potentially get through the second and hopefully get through the third this year and wrap up the Red Rising series in my brain. But yeah, like I said, I don't know a lot about the plot aspects. I just know that it's following Darrow again. I think there's some aspects on it that I'm not quite sure about. I know Elliot Brooks read at least the first one and she was not a big fan because she thought like everything that made Darrow um, morally just or like drove him as a character in the Red Rising trilogy, that's kind of gone. He's changing kind of his ways or his morals. That makes me a little uncomfortable because I don't know if I will like it, but I want to know and I want to know what happens. And if Severo's in it, I am there. I really hope he's in the whole series. I just want to know more. I just want to know. I want to know. I want to know what happens. And now that the third book's coming out this year, maybe I'll have more of a drive to find out what happens. But I would like to read Iron Gold and Dark Age, potentially the third one this year as well. We made it this far and I just want to see it through. Another YA series that I'm really curious about and sounded like I would really enjoy, but I haven't heard I don't think I've heard anyone talk about this series and it doesn't mean nobody has or anything like that. I just haven't personally heard anything about this series, but it sounded good and it sounded like something I wanted to read. So I'm hoping to read the whole series this year, but I want to at least start it. And that is The Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton. This is a trilogy and I believe the last book came out last year or in 2020, one of the two. Ooh, I just saw that Stephanie Garber blurbed this on the back when I bought it. That didn't mean a thing to me, but now it does. And her little blurb, I don't know if you care, her little blurb says a fantastical feminist fairy tale full of love, mystery, sisterhood, and severed hands. Heart of Thorns casts a fierce and magical spell. Give it to me, Stephanie Garber. I don't remember a ton about this series. I just remember when I read the synopsis when I bought the book, I was really intrigued about it. And it's one that I would really like to get to because you know, it's one of those books that I was like, oh, that sounds great. And I like bought the trilogy and I really want to read it. And I think I'm going to love it, but I just never picked up and I want to pick it up. I want to get to it. So I really need to make myself do that this year. Kind of what I know about this is that the main character is seeking revenge over the person that killed her mother. And in this world, only women can possess magic and all women are suspected to have it. And they're kind of half human, half God type 
entities. And they're feared and hunted and so she is like wanting to hunt them because one of them killed her mother and she trains to hunt them and to be a hunter. But her father actually tells her, just kidding, you're gonna marry a prince and become a king's wife. And so she's like, I don't wanna do that, I wanna be a hunter. And so she kind of is like trying to plot this way out of this arranged marriage because she doesn't want it. And then she finds out she has magic and is one of these entities she's hated for so long for killing her mother. And I think the plot kind of goes from there. But it sounds great. It sounds like something I will really enjoy. And so I really want to pick this up and I need to make myself pick it up this year. Please tell me your thoughts on this if you've read this. I would love to know. And the last series that I'm going to talk about in today's video that I would like to start is the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes. This is another older YA series that I feel like has some hype but also has a lot of uh, criticism. And I think it's one of those ones that people have fun with and they enjoy, but they're also like, yeah, it's kind of cheesy. I'm okay with that as long as it's fun and I enjoy it. I've heard Olivia Reed's a latte talk about this series and how she really likes it and finds it enjoyable and it's just kind of fun. I think I would also really think it's fun and enjoyable. She's kind of compared it to like a YA Game of Thrones, which maybe would vibe better with me because I don't know how I feel about Game of Thrones. <laughs> I believe it follows multiple perspectives, if at least three, two or three perspectives of characters in this book and that some of them are enemies and that there's kind of like some enemies to lovers thing going on. This little thing on the back says, witches if found are put to death and watchers, immortal beings who take the shape of hawks to visit the human world have been almost entirely forgotten. A vicious power struggle quickly escalates to war and four young people collide against one another and the rise of Elementia, the magic that can topple kingdoms and crown a ruler in the same day. That sounds good. <laughs> I actually didn't think it would sound that good to me, but that sounds interesting. And it sounds like there's like shape-shifting hawk people, which is super cool. So yeah, I think I will enjoy this series. I think it'll be really fun. I bought the first three in this series and I'm leaving it at that until I at least read the first one. I believe there's six or seven total. So this is a series I definitely need to get to. Like I said, I want to get to more of my backlist, more of my older books that I have on my shelves. And so this is definitely one I would like to start. And then hopefully if I like it, I can grab the other books as we go. But I just have the first three for now and I will leave it at that. We'll see if I enjoy it or if I really love it or if I really hate it. I hope I don't hate it. I don't know anyone that goes into books like, I hope I hate this book, but I think I'll like it. If I don't love it, I think I'll enjoy it. I've heard pretty good things about it. Maybe not like the best like glowing praise, but just kind of like, this is really fun. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with reading YA fantasy series that are fun and that's it. If you've read this series, please tell me your thoughts. All right, this video is pretty long, so I think we're just gonna cut it off there. If you would like to see me talk about more series I would like to read in the future, I can do that. Or if you would like to see all of the unread books on my shelves, I can also do that video. Just let me know down below. But otherwise, that is it for today's video. Please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye.